Thank you, Mr. Chairman and uh, Mr. Powell. Welcome as your first parents as chairman. First of many. I'm sure you have them all circle in your calendar. Look forward to them to the eagerness <laughs> as a child does to Christmas, right? Indeed. Um, I want to talk about the uh, labor market, in particular wage growth uh, for America's workers. An article in the Harvard Business Review last, November, or last October discussed wage trends since the 1970s and found that wage gains have mostly accrued to top earners, while wages have declined or been stagnant for the bottom half of the income distribution. Uh, the bottom half of the income distribution is comprised of many Americans who don't have a four-year degree, uh, many who don't even have a high school diploma. Research from the Economic Policy Institute shows that American workers without a high school education uh, have seen their wages decline by 17% since 1979 adjusted for inflation. And for workers with a high school education <clears throat> but no college, uh, wages have declined by 2%. The chart to my left displays this, shows what I'm talking about. You can see the massive wage growth uh, for those with a college degree or an advanced degree and wage declines in real terms for those with a high school degree or less. One of my top priorities is to ensure that hardworking Arkansans can share in the economic prosperity that we see in our country in ways that they have not over the course of my lifetime. Uh, Mr. Chairman, you, you write, the, I should say the entire board writes on page two and three of the monetary policy report, although there is no way to know with precision, the labor market appears to be near or a little beyond full employment at present. Uh, what's your personal assessment of this matter? Is the uh, economy at full employment today? You know, as, as we say in our uh, statement of longer run goals and policy strategy, we look at a number of, there's no place you can directly observe it, so we look at a range of indicators. And I would say most of those indicators say that we're either at or beyond full employment. There are a couple that suggest maybe we're not. I would point to wages and I'd point to labor force participation by prime age males. This is a long answer. It's, it's hard to give a really clear answer, but we don't actually know precisely where full employment is. Put it all in the blender, it seems to me we're very close to full employment. Yeah, um, to, but, to but pick up on your... Reach, so I, would, I would add, that isn't the case in every region. Or, you know. To pick up on your point about labor force participation, um, while our unemployment rate is a bit of good news at 4.1% and jobless claims seem to be continuing to trend downward, it is somewhat surprising, given those economic conditions, that over the last year, uh, labor force participation continued to decline from 62.9% in January of 2017 to 62.7% in January of 2018. Um, even if you account for demographic change for the aging of the baby boom generation, uh, many estimates say that two million workers are still missing from our economy. Um, I also would note that job growth continues to outseed population growth, which suggests that there's still slack in the labor market. Uh, and a lot of this slack appears to be uh, in, in part on the lower end of the economic scale of those workers who have a high school degree or uh, less than that. Um, would you agree with that assessment? Generally, generally yes. Um, we are, um, you know, labor force participation has been essentially flat since the back half of 2013, so a little more than four years, and the downward trend might be 25 basis points a year. So I look at us as having made up probably the slack that emerged fully, probably and, fully made up the slack that emerged as part of the crisis. And the, and the wage growth we've seen over the last year, while, while good, um, I, I would suggest it's still not good enough, especially as long as we have those missing workers. Um, so I, I'd hate to see, putting aside all the other reasons why you might see rate increases in the coming months ahead, rate increases because of continued increases in wages, especially for working class Americans. Um, and the labor market, like any other market, is a market that's driven by supply and demand, correct? Yes. So, so if labor, if the supply of labor exceeds the demand of labor, then you'd see downward pressure on wages. Um, that's one reason why I and some other senators, like Senator Perdue, have been so <clears throat> focused on our immigration system. Um, you know, if you could magically convert a million high school graduates in this country to a million Stanford graduates that could go to work in our you know, high-tech industry, then presumably that would be good for the wages of working-class Americans. Well, that's essentially what we do every single year is that in reverse, is we bring in a million unskilled and low-skilled workers uh, that are competing against the very people who have not shared in prosperity, and for that matter, competing against the previous generation of immigrants. 
Um, I don't think that's good for American citizens. I don't think that's good for our economy. Um, and we'll continue to work hard to make sure that those workers can share in the prosperity that all Americans in the upper income brackets and uh, uh, college educated and more have shared in the past. Thank you.